All right. Um, well, I think we'll get started now. Um, welcome to the COVID-19 learning series for long-term care. I'm Sarah Metcalf, a program manager in long-term care and the moderator for this session. Um, just a reminder that this session is being recorded and will be posted on the COVID-19 intranet page for people to access later on. Um, this is also where you can access previous recordings from our learning sessions. First of all, I would like to acknowledge today that I'm a visitor working on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, known as the Saanich, Songhees, and Esquimalt peoples. Please take a moment to reflect and acknowledge the land that you're joining us from today. Thank you for taking the time to join our learning series. The purpose of this series is to build your confidence and help you feel better prepared to work safely during COVID-19. Our first four sessions covered what to do in the event of a influenza outbreak, how to prepare for and contain a COVID-19 outbreak, the response protocol, and visiting in long-term care. We would really like to get your feedback on this learning series session as well. Um, so I'll be posting a link to a short survey in the chat box for you to complete. Um, please just save the link um, so you can still access it once the session has ended. Um, today is the final session of our five week series uh, and it's all about clinical simulations. If you have any questions for our presenters today, please feel free to post your question in the chat box and they will review them at the end of their presentation. Our presenters today are Darren Abbey, the Director of the Center for Interprofessional Clinical Simulation Learning, Daisha Reed, the Manager of Program Practice and Education, and Tamara Young, the Clinical Nurse Educator for Island Health Simulations. Thank you all for joining us today. I will turn things over to our presenters. Excellent. Um, thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, we're uh, super happy to be here. Um, before we get going, can I just um, thank you all for joining us and, and for the work that you've done to date. It's um, obviously a difficult year and you guys are doing uh, difficult work under normal circumstances, let alone in the middle of this pandemic. So a big shout out um, sort of from us to, to you all for the work that you do. Thank you. Um, we've got some time together to talk about um, simulation and the work that we're doing uh, with um, uh, long-term care. So really happy to, to be part of this um, together. Um, we do invite questions as, as mentioned in the chat room. So, so please do uh, uh, share them and we'll try to get to them in a timely manner. Um, we also want to acknowledge that um, uh, we're on unceded territory and, and our team is certainly um, uh, honored to, to and grateful to be here and invite you if you want, as, as Sarah mentioned, to, to take a moment and, and think about where you are and, and, and in the world and, and what part, whose lands um, you're on and maybe where you came from. If you want to make an acknowledgement, like, uh, same in the, in the chat room, that'd be grand. Um, before we move on uh, to this content, just a note that, that we don't have any financial conflicts of interest to disclose. And the three of us, uh, Daisha, Tamara, and I are going to go through um, some slides and share with you what we're up to. Uh, we're going to take turns and certainly uh, we plan to uh, leave quite a bit of room at the end to have some conversation. So uh, uh, that's what we've got. So over to you, Tamara. Thanks, Darren. Uh, so during our time together today, we're going to be defining what simulation is, describing how long-term care has been using sim, uh, we'll share how we're supporting facilitators, uh, describing the before, during, and after segments of simulation for the long-term care video simulation project, and then at the end, like Darren mentioned, we're just going to address any questions and invite some conversation that comes up following our discussion. <clears throat> And we can go to the next slide. Perfect, thanks. Um, so we like to use this definition of simulation and this states that simulation is a technique that creates situations that allows people to experience a representation of real events for the purposes of practice, learning, or to gain understanding of systems or human actions. And as you can see here, we have evaluation and testing crossed out from the original definition. And this is purposeful. Um, it's because for the long-term care video simulation project, we're using simulation to support teams to provide opportunity for practice, but not to test or evaluate. <clears throat> so when our team thinks about simulation, we see it in the following segments. 
preparing for the sim, the pre-brief, the simulation, the debrief, and then the after simulation component. So over to you, Daisha, to talk, if you could just to talk a little bit about, about what um, long-term care has been doing um, previous before, before our team got involved. Well, before um, March of this year, which seems 10 years ago, actually, uh, and the world went into a pandemic phase, we were uh, happily going along, delivering our education in our classrooms. And it was quickly apparent that we needed to come up with a different solution. Uh, we were, um, Dr. Margaret Manville, our executive director, our medical director for um, long-term care, uh, came to me one day and she said that her and Kathleen, Dr. Kathleen McFadden had been talking and they had been approached by a few staff members about the their internal anxiety levels surrounding COVID and how they would deal with it if should a situation arrive on their units. So it was the first time that we'd really heard that there was mounting anxiety amongst the staff to be able to deal with a situation at their own sites. So um, we had a little chat about how could we use um, simulation work. It started really small and it quickly, it grew probably as fast as the, the pandemic grew. And now we're in a completely different situation with our, our um, confidence levels. So we started by doing really small, this was probably late March of 2020. We started doing smaller simulations, just tabletop exercises where we took the wonderful infection control posters that have the donning and doffing pictures on them. And they were nicely laid out already into nine little pictures. We cut them apart, laminated them. And then we asked staff to take them and rearrange them and put them back together. And that was how we kind of addressed the donning and doffing of PPE because that was one of the next to hand hygiene. That's one of the most important things to follow correctly. So they really liked it. They really liked the little game, but we wanted to step it up a little bit. So then um, in August, the Ukulta, the staff at Ukulta Lodge in Campbell River design, uh, created a video uh, with their own staff as, as the actors, and they broke it into three sections so that when, when the videos were shown to staff, you could do the whole thing at once if you had the time. But as you know, in long-term care, we're often we're often doing little 10, 15 minute pieces of education. So they were nicely built so that they could be broken out down into three sections. And uh, we started using the video and then the COVID coaches, you may have all heard of the COVID coach program, were introduced to the videos and to the simulation. Myself and a couple of our clinical nurse educators on our team worked to create a guide and we, um, so that the COVID coaches could deliver the, the simulations at their sites and be ready for the answers that the staff would bring to them and, and boosting their confidence. So once they, once they realized um, that what they actually had to do, if there was a suspected COVID case, for example, their confidence levels grew, their anxiety levels dropped. Uh, there's still the worry there and, but having the information and having the ability to practice it and go through it uh, over and over if they wished was really, really helpful for them. And so then we transitioned. I don't know, Darren, where y your team merged with us, but we, we um, were offered help from Darren's team and we gladly took it. And Darren and Tamara and uh, some of the others on their team have worked to help us to elevate the Sims to even a, a, a richer level and help the coaches. So that's where, um, that's where your team came in, Darren, and, and you uh, became a real partner for us. So that was a learning opportunity for us. And, and, I, and I think you've had some fun too. Yeah, thank you um, for some of that background. I much appreciate it. It, it, it. Without a doubt, it's been a pleasure to do this collaboration. I, I'll just quickly note, it's an island health project. And in addition, we are most certainly uh, collaborating with our affiliates and, and partners, which I think is a real nice part mm -hmm. of, of this work. Um, so where do we go from here? Well, we wanted to talk a bit about how it is that we are supporting um, the, the coaches and or others who are doing this facilitation. Um, uh, Tamara, do you want to talk a bit about the, the, the workshop and how we're, how we're supporting? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, so the out of the collaboration with the long term care team, um, we ended up working on some documents together, which we'll discuss shortly. And, uh, and through that we decided to take the, um, <clears throat> we offer a facilitation workshop through the sim lab, which is just a general facilitation simulation workshop. And uh, we decided let's try and do something for the COVID coaches that's specific to long term care and to the documents we created. And so we created a four hour condensed course uh, to introduce this project, um, review all of the supportive documents and provide opportunities for practice for the uh, for the COVID coaches. And, uh, and so I just wanted to, before I get into any details about the project itself, just say a big thank you. Um, this project was the result of a great deal of work by many individuals. And we, like Darren has said, um, and Daisha said, we're just all so appreciative of the opportunity to collaborate and want to thank those who have supported and contributed to this project. <clears throat> so as I mentioned before, we do like to think of SIM in the following five segments. And for this uh, simulation project, we designed all of our resources to align with these five segments of simulation <clears throat> and support the facilitators as they transitioned through each of these five segments. And uh, when Tamara says resources, she isn't kidding. So here's a list of the multiple resources we uh, have uh, uh, involved in this project. Tamara, would you be so kind to give a high level summary of these? <clears throat> Absolutely. So this document legend shows 10, and Stair mentioned when we say supportive documents, we really do mean it, um, 10 documents that we provided to support these sessions. And so as you can see on the graphic, these documents uh, can support the user before, during, and after the um, simulation. And they're tailored, all of them are tailored to long-term care content. Um, and they have little masks with numbers beside them. <clears throat> so each of them are easily identified as you go through. Anytime you encounter them, you can see a number beside them. And document number one, which is the coaches simulation support is basically the guiding document and it linked all the others within it um, as it highlighted uh, considerations for each of those five segments of simulation and when we did our workshop we orientated to all of these resources and how they could support <clears throat> and uh, if we go to the next slide i'll just uh, chat a little bit about um, those five segments, I'll start chatting anyways. Uh, so I'm just gonna introduce, so in the prepare segment, we reviewed uh, key considerations for facilitators preparing for those sims. And some of these are attending to logistics, preparing their participants, and highlighting supportive resources to aid their facilitation. Um, and included in this were some tools that we uh, co-created um, to guide facilitators, you know, while they were, well, while they were running the simulations and reenacting, um, some signage to inform those in the area what was happening, uh, and safety checklists to ensure that these sessions were planned at appropriate times and that those safety considerations were addressed. And the next segment we mentioned was the pre-brief. And so in this segment, uh, facilitators are setting the stage for their sim and they're orientating their participants. And so to support them with the pre-brief, we provided resources um, that did things like capture attendance information and lessons learned through these simulation sessions. Uh, we provided handouts with scenario details for the participants uh, and tools to support the facilitators as they set the stage for a learning environment that we uh, hope created um, um, some psychological safety for these teams to get together and practice their practice. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, and so that leads us to this next segment, uh, the simulation part. And really want to applaud um, uh, the initial thinkers of this project because they came up with doing simulations in a really uh, creative way that, that um, really suits the the need at hand and so simulation you know is can be thought of lots of different ways the way i tend to think of it is we're just practicing the practice huh and so as as Daisha mentioned the way the this project it has people practicing um is through the use of video and so the videos um i'll share with you in a moment um the the goals uh, associated with the three parts are but before I do that, I'll just sort of show you how, with this graphic, how they're being used. So you can imagine gathering together a group um, and assigning roles and then, and, and then watching the video with an eye and an ear for reenacting the, the role that you've been assigned. And then uh, doing just that, just practicing the practice, reenacting the, the video as seen and or uh, improvements the same. And then in that same group for having the conversation um, uh, uh, or, the, or the debrief and to learn and, and move forward and celebrate from there. So that's um, the how uh, video and how these simulations 
uh, are being used. So as you can see, and as Daisha described, there, there is a case uh, divided up into three segments and, and with associated goals and objectives um, uh, associated with, with all three parts. Um, so the initial segment, you know, a, a resident uh, initial presentation with some, some possible COVID symptoms. Uh, from there, it transitions to that, uh, the swabs coming back positive and this patient's condition deteriorates and everything that you've got to do associated with that, of course, that you're also familiar with in your settings. Uh, and this case progresses this way. Um, the, the patient's condition uh, deteriorates, becomes palliative, and in, in turn passes away in the facility. And so everything associated with these steps is really the objectives, uh, some highlighted there uh, on the screen. And so that's the way in which uh, simulation is being used um, and video is being used in this project. So that leads us to the debriefing part. And, and I think the debriefing part, um, you know, we could talk about for hours, you could do a five day course in this one, but, but simply put, debriefing is, is, is having the conversation, right? It's learning with, from, and about each other. And so, um, and so if we were to look for a definition of that to get on the same page, as it were, I'd, I'd maybe share this definition with you, um, a conversation. Right, a conversation between people to review a real or simulated event, as you can see, um, in which participants analyze right, their actions and they reflect on the role of thought processes, psychomotor skills, and their emotional states. And we do this to improve or sustain performance. And so when I think about this, this definition, just a couple of things I want to highlight. Right? This, this, this doesn't say, oh, find the problems and fix it. It says reflect and have a conversation and improve and sustain. And it's that sustain part I wanna highlight. Simulation isn't only find and fix the problem. So simulation is, is super well positioned to continue a, a excellent work and help people understand what it is about your work that's so excellent. So, so that sustain piece, really important, I think, part of this uh, conversation. So what does that look like? Well, the way we've sort of put this together for folks um, is, is this way. So not a, a, an absolute strategy, but a kind of a set of recommendations that we've, we've made to, and to support the facilitators, kind of a three step process. That, that initial reactions phase where at the end of a simulation, you know, when you, when you stop practicing and say, okay, that's great, everybody, you might turn to your participants and, and make eye contact and, and gather, you know, um, and say something like, hey, in, in, in a few words, can you just share, share what you're thinking right now? How that, how you feeling about how that went? Sort of purposely designed to, to tap into people's feeling state and, and hear how they're feeling. Not so much having the conversation yet, but to help them transition from the simulation part to the adult learning part, to the learning with, from, and about each other. And it's a, it's a bridge to the conversation. And the conversation, as you can see, some content here around uh, that you might use to generate the conversation. You know, in this, in this uh, time, our task as facilitators is to listen, is to facilitate. Um, is to ask the beautiful questions and, uh, and then hear other people's perspectives when, when people share. Uh, questions like, what went well? Uh, as you can see, you know, did anything stand out for you? Um, how might this contribute to your confidence? Looking at transferability, looking at integration, looking at understanding, looking at residence perspective, just doing the work of understanding. Moving toward a third stage where we try to wrap this up and, and, and I like to think about the summary stage is like a, a now what, so what conversation where we might ask like, so how is this gonna impact your practice? And, and what are your takeaway learnings? And if there are action items, who's gonna action those items? And, and who's gonna be responsible and accountable to making these improvements or to sharing this knowledge? And so that's the, the knowledge translation part of, of this work. And, and just to sort of share another lens on this conversation, as facilitators, I, I sometimes think about this work in three components. The, the, the three components are 
um, the things that we as facilitators want to talk about. And that's when we ask really specific questions. And, and certainly that's in uh, our wheelhouse as facilitators. But you know, there's other parts, right? There's the stuff that the participants want to talk about. And so when we ask a question like, so how did it go? Or what went well? We actually have no idea what's going to come, right? And so there, when we ask a question like that, it's really the participants that are driving the, the conversation. And so for me, that's participant-led content. And it's facilitator-led comment. And the third aspect of this would be some kind of emergent topic, wherein there's something that happened that we have to talk about. And um, so you can imagine a, a sentinel event, uh, you know, or some kind of um, significant breach in protocol, et cetera. Something that, that, that you, couldn't, you couldn't avoid eye contact with. You'd have to, you'd have to just jump into and, and talk about. So that's um, our sort of high level description of the debrief. Um, and uh, what we thought we would do now is just give you a little taste of, of what these uh, videos look like and, and sound like. And so we've taken a little snippet uh, from them uh, and I thought we would just share that a little piece. So um, can you see the video now, Sarah? Not yet? Okay, I think I, I'm going to stop sharing and start again. I think that works best. So let me do that. And I will try again. And please give me a thumb up. All right. Can you see it now? All right, that's what I'm looking for. Now here's the big test. Uh, will you be able to hear it? So I'm going to play 26 seconds, friends. And this is a snippet of one of the videos. And my invitation to you um, while you watch this is just imagine if you were watching this reenacted and you were a facilitator, and uh, some of you maybe are, just think about what kind of questions would you ask? What kind of conversations might you want to facilitate? So that's the, uh, that's the watch with purpose uh, invitation. So I'll just push play on this and uh, see how it goes. Can you hear? And hang the appropriate signage at the door. And then I'm going to clear the hallway of the residence. So there we go. Not very long. 26 seconds. And, and what I'm imagining is that as you watch, there were things in your mind of things you may want to, if you were a facilitator, things that you might want to talk about, things you might be curious about, things you might want to explore. So I can't see everyone right now, but you know, I'm hoping that you're smiling and you're nodding and you're thinking, yeah, absolutely, there's stuff I would want to talk about. Because our experience has been that, that that little snippet has provoked quite a bit of conversation. Um, about things like, you know, what's it like to do that task? What's it like to have that conversation with residents as you walk down the hall with a mask and say, oh, excuse me, I'm just passing by with this resident who, you know, may, et cetera. So that's, that's the, uh, a little snippet of, of the work. Uh, can you see the slide deck again? Perfect, thank you. Uh, so the after simulation part, as I described before, it's, a, it's about the, the debriefing and then it's about now what, so what. And so we had to um, bring to these simulations um, some resource to be able to capture that, that content. And so um, we're proud members of the BC Simulation Network and, and as such we catered uh, um, a resource, provincial resource to this project that, that looks a bit like this. And so this is, as Tamara said, the part of the simulation attendance record and summary form. And this is the summary form part where, which is really designed to capture the, the conversations, like what was talked about, and what were the action items? And, and the idea here is, is simply put, like if something is spectacular and something is being learned in one part of the island, we want everyone else to benefit from that learning. So when we say learning with, from, and about each other, we don't just mean the people in the room, right? We want the, the um, stuff 
the content, the, the expert um, practices, the best practices um, to trickle from one end of the island to the next. And our intention is to use this form to do that. And so we've got a fillable PDF um, that our, we're asking our facilitators to fill out and, and, and submit to our team. And, and here I put a big shout out to uh, uh, Christy Pfeiffer, who's uh, our secret weapon, who is our uh, admin assist extraordinaire, uh, who's doing a ton of this work. And, and um, uh, she's just so, so great at uh, collaborating and working on this project and, and pulling all this content together so that we can take a look at it and see how we might spread it. Um, and that's where we're at in, in that. Um, and last but not least, we have this document. So we imagine, we imagine and, and hope that you might imagine the following, that, that a simulation could occur. And then at some point in time in the future, our participants may have a lived experience. And maybe, just maybe, with any luck, they'll have a lived experience and they'll think to themselves, yeah, that went really well. And part, a part of the reason it went well was that simulation we did that day. Remember way back there, whenever it was, we did that practice with those guys in the video? Oh yeah, I remember. And now they can make these linkages between the simulation and the lived experience and the learning that they had, how that in turn changed their behaviors and how in turn the results of that and how that those impact the residents and or the delivery of care in the facility. And, and the Kirkpatrick tool as you see is designed to capture those linkages to take the, the simulation and learning, the case in particular, and bring it forward on reflection, if you afford me that sentence, bring it forward on reflection, uh, uh, sort of the impact that the simulation made uh, on the provision of, of, of the lived experience in facility. So that's, that's what the Kirkpatrick evaluation is all about. Um, so where do we go from here? Well, let's talk a bit about uh, celebrating all of this success. And, and so Deja, over to you. All right, so we've had a lot of successes. We were, Christy Pfeiffer let us know that we've had 34 facilitators go through Darren's and Tamara's training workshop, which is great because that's across the island. So we've got some facilitators ready at the go at any time. We've had um, approximately 54 sites that have train facilitators at them or COVID coaches that can do that work. Uh, 48 coaches have been, um, been doing SIMS. We have, um, we've have done close to 400 simulations, could be even higher because we didn't capture some of the work we did at the beginning. It was, um, it was uh, not in this data. So uh, out of that, there's pro probably about 1600 uh, participants in total through all those simulations. And 100% of those participants said that it was a very worthwhile um, uh, exercise, uh, very worth practicing. And, you know, numbers can be very black and white, and sometimes they don't mean that much. But if you think about 1,600 staff members that now have a higher level of confidence to be able to deal with a suspect COVID case or a, a positive COVID case, or even the, um, the death of a COVID uh, resident, uh, positive resident. That's a lot of um, human anguish that has been uh, reduced. So that's what I like to think about. I like to think about those 1600 people that are now a little bit ready, a little bit more ready than they ever were to handle what comes their way and to be able to mentor and walk other people through it. So if you think of the human side of it, it's a very, um, very impactful on the on the staff's clinical abilities and also the leadership to be able to direct the staff so um, that's what I like to think of so we 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 have had lots of successes we've elevated the knowledge and the interest in simulations much higher than it ever was before we know now that whatever happens with COVID we will likely always continue on with doing some type of simulation we have all kinds of ideas of different simulations. If you think about working with a dementia resident and using our pieces framework, using our violence prevention work, 
all kinds of ideas that we could bring in and create simulations that um, will help staff be able to do that to work in 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 a live action uh, you might say um, rather than just sitting in a classroom everyone learns better when they're up really participating going through it having fun with it and working with their colleagues so um, it, I'm interested I'm really curious to see where this goes with us in another year we could be in a whole different uh, realm the simulations will be just um, just uh, fabulous in long-term care outstanding thank you for that Tamara anything you'd want to add um, uh, uh, at this time at this part of the conversation you know, I just want to echo what Deja was saying and, and, and really emphasize for, for me, it's the stories of hearing our COVID coaches say, you know, um, I had someone in my class who who just wanted to practice donning and doffing and, and, and they're going to go to work tomorrow and they're going to don and doff. And this is just an opportunity for them to feel that confidence and, and in a very stressful time. And those are the stories that really impact me and, and the beauty of simulation. And it's been an absolute privilege to be a part of this. And, and I'm so excited, Deja, to hear that there's it's going to be ongoing simulation because that's what we're here for. So that's a shout out to everyone listening to you. That's what we're here for. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Tamela. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the, the success of this project, though, isn't the numbers, you know, uh, uh, though, the, though the potential uh, here is, as, as Daisha sort of described, is massive. The, you know, there's so many people involved in long-term care and the care of the residents um, in our affiliate partner sites and island health sites. But the real magic here isn't isn't the numbers. The real magic here are the lived experiences and 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 the confidence. It's really um, hard to to put a value, you know, on a Likert scale or what have you. When someone says to you something like, "I feel so much better," I really feel like the organization cares about me. Thank you for coming. And I can hardly wait to tell my my colleague that they should come and do this. That's that's really precious to me. And so and so we're really grateful to have this opportunity to to do this collaboration um, with, with y'all and, and really invite sort of ongoing uh, collaboration. So um, as, we, as we sort of round the corner to, to wrapping up, um, you know, these are the objectives we set out uh, to accomplish in the time we have. We hope that we have um, shared a definition of sort of our working definition of SIM. Um, uh, how long-term care has been using SIM, uh, how we are supporting these simulations. Uh, uh, you also heard the different segments, and we really wanted to assure time uh, to have some, some conversation and uh, with any luck be ahead of schedule and, and under budget. So that's, uh, that's what we're heading for now. Um, before I, I just open up the, the floor or the call, the Zoom call to, to questions, I, I'll just let you know um, that everything uh, we've done is open source and, and we really um, invite people to use these resources as they see fit. Um, we've sort of crafted a, uh, you know, a 10-10 document process. Um, and all of these resources will be available uh, soon, uh, he says, any day now, <laughs> on the BC Simulation website, um, which, which, as I mentioned before, we, we really support. And, and so it's all open source. Currently, the content is also available on the long-term care share, share Point. And, and so if you want access to that, um, many of you probably already have access to it. And in terms of simulation collaboration, um, feel free to contact us. And there's a, a, an email link um, for that uh, to get in touch with, with our team. So there we are. Thank you so much for this invitation. Uh, thank you for your interest, those of you who are on the line, and really happy to entertain questions or, or comments or curiosity. I've also um, changed the settings, so if you guys prefer to unmute yourselves and ask a question, feel free, or you can post in the chat box. So, um, I'm quite comfortable with silence and I'm aware that we could wait a bit, a bit to see what comes up. And if there isn't um, something that's bubbling up, maybe something I'll just throw into the arena uh, for consideration is, is you saw what we've done so far. 
in terms of simulation um, content and the objectives. And I could share that slide with you again, but I, I guess I wonder um, if there's other things that, that in your time uh, that you've been thinking, you know, hey, we'd like to practice this, or we'd like to, to give our teams an opportunity or our residents or our, anyone an opportunity to practice something else, to simulate something else. If you've got a thought about something else you might want uh, to collaborate uh, uh, on, please let us know. Darren, just as a little bit of a um, um, hint as what kind of things that you could do, I have had a couple people approach me, could we have a simulation to practice the anaphylactic protocol in long-term care? So it could be something like that. Um, that's very clinical and very black and white. There's a very set way to do that. Or it could yeah. be something, you know, I've got a a dementia resident that is trying to get out the door all the time. Could we simulate something that uh, would show us how to approach her and help her to be more settled and and get redirected. So it could be something that's a little more um, like that. It really, it's, it's open to so many choices. Yeah, thank you. When I think about simulation, I mean, I just, I'm a, I'm a true believer, you know, I mean, practicing the practice for me is just where it's at. Um, the learning with, from and about each other just highlights that. I think we, we imagine work and we imagine what other people do. But my experience of simulation is what, what, what we get is we find the difference often between work as imagined and work as done. And, and so often simulation bridges that gap in, in such an elegant way. I want to just uh, echo what Darren said, you know, the, the learning with from and about, we're so, I think, we're so lucky to work in these interdisciplinary teams as well. And, you know, we have fantastic interdisciplinary teams in long-term care. And another option for simulation too is focusing on things like handover and different communication uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, we do a lot of work with that. And so if there's any interest in that too, it's looking at the team and what are different team events that bring everyone in and, and can create practice for that. And like Daisha said, that could be clinical, that could be an anaphylaxis protocol, but it could be things like a, a handover, communication with the resident or their family member and different opportunities like that. So we can get really creative with the types of opportunity we have in simulation. Things that have been mentioned, um, you know, if you did have a, a positive uh, resident, you'd undoubtedly gather your team, uh, which would include everyone from housekeeping to, you know, facilities to et cetera. You'd imagine having this conversation at, at, a, at the site level. Well, maybe there's an opportunity to practice that conversation to assure you don't miss anything. Um, that was sort of one of the ideas that, that, that bubbled up as an option. So. Well, we, um, then I would just say thank you again. A uh, couple of comments in the chat room. Thank you for, for making them. Um, appreciate it. Uh, do see that, that Sarah put the uh, link um, for some feedback and we're all ears. Look forward to your feedback. And um, thank you for what you do. And we'll be happy to, to entertain a, a next conversation if, uh, if something else pops up for you and, and you want to collaborate further or hear more about uh, this work. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate you coming and listening today and giving us your comments and your evaluations in. All right. Well, I guess we'll uh, wrap things up today. Thank you so much to our presenters. And uh, yeah, as Darren said, there is the link to the survey in the chat box. Um, thanks so much for coming, everyone. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay.